What is up everybody? Sven Diesel here. I'm going to be tying up the bent hook minnow bugger. Basically it's a woolly bugger that is on a bent hook and designed to look like a minnow. Uh, the bent hook is kind of a cool thing. It's an A-Rex hook. It's a TP650. I'm uh, going to be basically taking a, a fly I found in my box and trying to upgrade it and modify it. You can see the bent here. I'm putting a tungsten bead that's going to be right here at the bend, hopefully to keel it so it's point up when it rides through the water. And as you strip it, it's not going to snag on any uh, weeds or, or grass on the bottom or, or things that I have. Cause, and I'm just going to start here with a white wax thread. This is by Semperfly. It's an dot, And we're going to start here behind the eye because I want to secure that bead um, kind of right there at the, uh, the bend. Uh, to hopefully help it uh, keel over properly and um, cause it to ride a hook point up. So I'm just going to start with just five, six wraps, cut out my tag end, and then I'm going to go over this bead so that it's positioned right there at the bend. And then make sure it's in the correct position, do a couple wraps behind it, and then I'll go back over one more time and then back again just to really make sure that's solid. And that should be good enough. And we'll proceed down the shank at this point. And that's going to help flip it over, cause it to ride down. The first time you strip that with the bent, it's just going to flip over is the theory behind it. Um, so next we're going to tie in some marabou. This is uh, some uh, white marabou. And I'm just going to take off a couple feathers for this. I don't want a super bulky tail. And I'm going to do this tail roughly the length of the uh, the hook guide to the bend of the hook. So um, I'm not doing a super long one, just more proportionate one. And I'm going to use two feathers because I want it to be a little bit thicker. I'm not going for super sparse on this one. But i got to add a little bit of meat when I'm trying to imitate a minnow. And the reason I'm trying to imitate this or recreate this pattern is I found one in my box that I had actually colored with a, sh a gray Sharpie and it, it crushed the fish. And so I'm just trying to recreate it because I don't have any photos and I'm just going off memory. And I know that I colored it with a gray Sharpie to add the, the minnowness. But uh, we're going we're gonna to just upgrade it a little bit. So right there, that's a perfect tail. Nice, good taper to it. And I'm just going to take some of this uh, flash here. I don't know what brand this is, but it's kind of got a blue silverish uh, hue to it. Um, that's perfect for minnows so I'll just take about four or five strands and I want to tie it in so that it's on the top I don't want it on the bottom and so you got to remember if this is right and hook point up our the top of this as we're retreat stripping it in is going to be the bottom right now uh, as we have it in the vise and so I'm just going to tie it in um, so that it's um, slightly on the bottom side of this uh, hook shank and then I'm going to run it up and over this bead um, not because uh, of any particular reason but my hope is that there's a little bit of flash on the top of that bead and that way it would look more like a, a gill or a hot spot on the on the gills rather and and hopefully cover up the top section look more like a, a minnow so it, we didn't really put a ton on there so it's not really going to cover it entirely but that was the point so um, we tied it off I clipped them just longer than the tail now we're going to tie in some uh, 0 0.1 uh, millimeter this is Semperfly this is blue um, I thought of the idea of using pink as well so um, I'm going to tap a bunch and test them but uh, this is just a, a really neat blue uh, looks grayish blue to me but uh, it's really nice wire. It doesn't add a ton of weight or bulk, but just a little hint of visibility and flash. And so I'm just going to get that out of my way once it's tied in. And we're going to tie in a, a white um, hackle feather. This is a bugger pack by Whiting Farm. And we'll go ahead and uh, tie that in by the tip. Uh, these feathers come in different sizes, and so I just kind of judge on how I want it to look in, in size. And so I'm gonna tie in more, not right at the tip of this feather, but kind of up a little bit. And then as I tie it in, I pull it a little bit so that I get about an eighth of an inch before the fibers start. So that way I have uh, room to orient those fibers. So 
we've got pretty much uh, most of this prepped and now we are going to do our body and for this I'm using a product by it's kind of new it's Semperfly um, it's their guard hair chenille and this is um, gray but to me it looks like minnow so it's got um, gray fuzz I, I guard hair whatever the material is and then it's got a lot of like hints of flash that's blue and pearl um, looks like a, a, a minnow and so I'm going to be tying this in um, right here I'm just trying to get a little bit of a tip here to tie it in um, with this you don't want to pull out the the guard hairs like you would a normal chenille I'm just trying to crease them to a point and then go ahead and tie that in and this this material actually is a little bit stretchy and so you got to be um, it's, it's ultra durable but I like the stretch so you got to really work on tension and before I do any of my buggers or leeches I always throw down a little bit of zappa gap or super glue just right there to kind of bond everything so that on that first take if they hit that bead that beads not going to slide back I mean I don't think it will at this point but it's just kind of a habit of mine and so I'm going to wrap this being a little bit particular as I wrap it because I'm, I'm wanting to really create a nice a nice uh, underbody here and this could actually just be your your body I mean look at that the, you got the flash you got this guard here and this is not the finished product um, when it comes packaged it comes a little bit uh, tight and uh, some of those uh, fibers are trapped down and so it's highly recommended you brush it out but I'm not going to do that right now maybe I'll do another video later so you can just see how buggy this looks um, and so we'll trim that out but uh, I guess I don't have my hook all the way in let's get that a little tighter but that right there is the guard hair chenille and I can't think of a better color um, I mean that looks this is a minnow pretty much so um, this is really kind of coming together great to recreate what I was uh, fishing and lost so um, let's go ahead and palmer this the opposite direction that we did our guard hair so um, when I was doing the guard hair I was palmering f from the opposing side to me and so now I'm wrapping from me to the opposing side that way we're, we're always counter ribbing for durability and I just want to kind of help um, keep some of that guard hair um, trapped down to create that small underbody but and then with all my buggers and stuff I, I usually do a full wrap to two right there at the head just to create a nice little head profile to help displace water and uh, give it a nice a nice good look so we'll go ahead and tie that off um, and um, we're almost done so this is going quicker than uh, I anticipated, but we'll go ahead and snip out that hackle after doing some secure wraps in front and behind. And now it comes time for, I got a couple of fibers I don't like. Let's go ahead and just do a few more turns to push those back. So now we're going to counter rivet. So now I need to come uh, from uh, the opposing side to me. And, you know, this is where you want to wiggle it through so you're trying not to trap fibers but um, on a pattern like this if you trap a few fibers it's okay um, you know it's not gonna be the end of the world and the fish isn't gonna look at it and be like oh man there's 17 trap fibers but you know you don't want to trap them because that's what's displacing giving a little bit of profile a little bit more bugginess um, so um, you know do your best to not trap them and we're gonna brush the heck out of this so you are good um, to just wrap away, and that uh, that bugger feather is pretty pretty strong, durable. So if you have some feathers that aren't going the right way, you can go ahead and stroke it at this point and get them out of the way. But let's uh, go ahead and tie that off. There's some nice uh, securing behind and in front wraps. Do a couple crank downs, and bam, let's get that uh, gone. I actually pulled tight enough with this uh, um, thread it kind of cre creased down in there real nice so uh, this wax thread is pretty strong stuff so I'm able to do that so we'll go ahead and whip finish and get ready to uh, do one of our, our last step we're almost done 
and we'll trim that out after a double whip finish just a just three four turn whip finish and then I always like to do a couple so let's trim that out and then the uh, the next step here is I'm gonna grab a nice little uh, brush a velcro brush made by Stonfo and we're going to be really aggressive on this so we'll just start going with our front to back side to side diagonally you could even maybe do circular motion I don't know um, be, be, be aggressive as mentioned and um, you've got the wire holding the hackle down and the hackle holding the guard hair down and the guard hills in a in a cord and so it's durable um, if you can't be aggressive on it at this point um, I don't understand w w why you'd fish it because the first chomp is going to tear it apart so um, yeah anyway that is amazing so basically I was trying to recreate something that I had in my box and um, sadly I never had a photo of it I don't even know where it came from I might not have even tied it but um, I was just trying to tie it up because I caught a lot of fish on it today and while my memory was fresh I wanted to see if I could maybe update it a little bit because I kept uh, sometimes I was snagging I was fishing a lot of weed beds and so by doing the um, the bend hook I'm hoping that on that first trip it's going to flip and ride um, hook point up and just really crush it so um, I put a little bit of uh, Semperfly's uh, no tack uh, UV on that thread spread it around with my bodkin and cured it up and that uh, should hold everything in place now the last step here is I'm gonna put a little bit more um, I'm gonna tie in this is like a purple and this is nano silk it's uh, I think this is actually 18 aught it might be 12 aught um, but I'm just going to go ahead and build up a little bit of a taper to this uh, tungsten bead. And by doing so, you basically start at the eye, work your way up to the bead. And then as you're building a taper, if you've never built one before, basically I think of it in, as in, you know, basically I have that area. I'm going to divide it into fourths. So I'm going to wrap up to the bead, come down a fourth, go back to the bead, wrap down a half go back to the bead, go down three quarters, and then go back to the bead. And you understand that builds a taper. So the bulk is by the bead, and the less bulk is by the eye. So there's a taper if you've never done one. But you don't need to really do it in fourths. You can actually do it in 60 fourths if you're particular. I'm joking. So that's just a little bit of a, um, adding a little bit of more hotspot head, um, I just know that uh, what was on the fly I was using, I basically, I think it was the thread that was colored with a Sharpie. So you could do that as well. You could have kept your wax thread and done that. But um, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more resin on this just to create a little bit more um, of a false profile or cone. And uh, we'll, we're using more of that uh, Semperfly no Tack UV. And I love this because look, I'm placing it with the tip of this um, of this uh, dispenser, and I don't have to worry about it moving. I mean, look, normally I'd spin my vise or you know try and get it to flow perfectly, but it is staying perfect. Um, I've, I've, that's one of the properties about this resin that I really really like is it doesn't once you place it, it doesn't really move. So. There we go, that's uh, curing up, and this is the uh, the Bent Bugger Minnow. Um, it's, like I said, it's basically just a woolly bugger, but on a bent hook. Um, I crushed it on a thing a pattern very similar to this yet today, and so I got getting asked what I tied it on. Well, it's something very close to this, so tie it up. Thanks for watching, and hope it pierces lips.